Welcome, everyone. It is this Sunday, the sixth, the Sunday before Easter, which is known as Sexagesima, and we use as our order of service, Divine Service Setting 2, on page 167. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins, cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, and we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them his Holy Spirit. May the Lord, who has begun this good work in us, bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, the strength of all who put their trust in you, mercifully grant that by your power we may be defended against all adversity through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The first reading is from Hebrews chapter 4, beginning with the ninth verse. So then there remains a Sabbath rest for the people of God, for whoever has entered God's rest has also rested from his works, as God did from his. Let us therefore strive to enter that rest, so that no one may fall by the same sort of disobedience. For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and of spirit, joints and of marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And no creature is hidden from his sight, but all are naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let your enemies know that you alone, whose name is the Lord, are the most high over all the earth. O oh my God, make them like a whirling dust, like chaff before the wind. O oh God, you have rejected us, broken our defenses, and you have made us angry, or you have been angry with us. O oh, restore us. You have made the land to quake, you have torn it open. Repair its breaches, for it taught us that your beloved ones may be delivered. Give salvation by your right hand and answer us. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the eighth chapter. To you, Lord. 
when a great crowd was gathering and people from town after town came to Jesus, he said in a parable, a sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some fell along the path and was trampled underfoot, and the birds of the air devoured it. And some fell on the rock, and as it grew up, it withered away because it had no moisture. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up with it and choked it. And some fell on good soil and grew and yielded a hundredfold. As he said these things, he called out, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. And when the, his disciples asked him what this parable meant, he said, To you it has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom of God, but for others they are in parables, that seeing they may not see and hearing they may not understand. Now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. The ones along the path are those who have heard. Then the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts so that they may not believe and be saved. And the ones on the rock are those who, when they hear the word, receive it with joy. But these have no root, since they believe for a while, yet in time of testing fall away. As for what fell among the thorns, they are those who hear, but as they go on their way, they are choked by the cares and riches and pleasures of life, and their fruit does not mature. As for what uh, are in the good soil, they are those who, hearing the word, hold it fast in an honest and good heart and bear fruit with patience. Here ends the gospel reading. Praise to you, o Christ. The hymn of the day is, I am but a stranger here, heaven is my home, number 748. In the Lutheran service book, number 748. I'm but a stranger here, heaven is my home. Earth is a desert drear, heaven is my home. Danger and sorrow stand round me on every hand. Heaven is my father land, heaven is my home. What though the tempest rage, heaven is my home. Short is my pilgrimage, heaven is my home. And time's wild wintry blast soon shall be overpassed. I shall reach home at last, heaven is my home. Therefore I murmur not, heaven is my home. What am I earthly but heaven is my home, and I shall surely stand there at my Lord's right hand. Heaven is my fatherland, heaven is my home. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The reading we shall look at more closely is from Hebrews 4. So there is a special rest waiting for the people of God. For all who enter into God's rest will find rest from their labors, just as God has rested after creating the world. The biblical phrase, no rest for the wicked, has been taken out of context to describe the inevitability of daily work and toil. People who use the phrase that way, especially to describe themselves, 
are just trying to be funny or perhaps angling for a bit of sympathy. But there is nothing funny about being wicked. And it is certainly tragic if your destiny is to never have any rest. The God who created the world and us in it is clearly a laborer himself and in favor of labor for his creation. During your earthly life in general and in your missionary service in particular, hard work is expected. God expects his people to be industrious. As the scripture says, he who would not work, neither shall he eat. Yet as God himself rested from his own labor after creating the world, so he is also in favor of rest for both the righteous and the unrighteous. God used the example of his resting on the seventh day of creation to establish the principle of a day of rest and worship for his people. God gave the Israelites the third commandment so that his people would remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. The various elements of the Sabbath symbolize the coming of the Messiah, who would provide a permanent rest for his people. He would be their rest. Once again, the example of resting from our labors comes into play. With the establishment of the Old Testament law, the Jews were constantly laboring to make themselves acceptable to God. Their labors included trying to obey a myriad of ceremonial laws, temple laws, civil laws. Of course, they couldn't possibly keep all those laws, so God provided an array of sin offerings and sacrifices so that they could come to him for forgiveness of how they had broken his laws and restore fellowship with him, but only temporarily. Just as they began their physical labors after a one-day rest, so too they have to continually offer sacrifices. Hebrews 10 tells us that the law can never, by the same sacrifices, repeated endlessly, year after year, make perfect those who draw near to worship. But those sacrifices in the Old Testament were offered in anticipation of the ultimate sacrifice of Christ on the cross, who after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down at the right hand of God. Just as he rested after performing the ultimate sacrifice, he sat down, ceased from his labor of atonement because there was nothing more to be done. No further payment needed to be made or would be accepted. Because of what he did, we are no longer in need of laboring to be justified in the sight of God. Jesus was sent so that we might rest in God and in the work that he has done to redeem us. Another element of the Sabbath day rest, which God instituted, is a foreshadowing of our complete rest in Christ that he blessed it, sanctified it, and made it holy. Here again, we see Christ as our rest, the holy, perfect Son of God who sanctifies and makes holy all who believe in him. God sanctified Christ to be our sacrifice for sin. In him, we find complete rest from any labor of self-justification because he has provided atonement for our sins on the cross. As the Bible says, God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. We can now cease from futile self-justification and rest in him, not just one day a week, but always. Jesus can be our Sabbath rest in part because he came to relieve us of attempting to achieve salvation by our works. We no longer rest for only one day, but forever cease our laboring to attain God's favor. Jesus is our rest from works now, just as he is the door to heaven 
where we will find rest in him forever. The same God who wants us to rest in him and trust in what he has done through his son Jesus Christ during our earthly lives has prepared a special rest after this poor life of labor. Heaven is God's gift of rest to us, something that we can never earn or deserve, no matter how hard we may work at it. The Lord Jesus Christ has done all the work to pave the way for us to be saved so that we might have the forgiveness of our sins and eternal rest as his gift. He is the way to that. The Lord Jesus Christ, when he died for the sins of the world, carried the full load of human guilt on his shoulders so that we might have rest. Rest now from the worry of whether we can work hard enough to make up for all our sins, and rest in the future when in the life of the world to come, we who trust in Jesus and his finished work enjoy the eternal life in heaven that our Lord Jesus Christ earned for us by his greatest labor of love. With faith in Christ, all believers are able to rejoice at the words of the epistle for today to the Hebrews, so there is a special rest still waiting for the people of God. For all who enter into God's rest will find rest from their labors, just as God rested after he created the world. What awaits us after we leave this world is true rest. Even retirement cannot be compared to the rest of which we are speaking. For even in retirement, there are worries about uh, finances, stress about health, stress about relationships, and more, especially as more and more of our friends leave this world and we are more and more alone. What we are speaking about is the rest that is available to those who know the peace that transcends all understanding. The Bible tells us that now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. For it doth not yet appear what we shall be, writes St. John, but, when, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself even as he is pure. God has purified you from all your sins. And just as nothing can change that fact, so nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Redeemer, your Savior, and your rest. In the twinkling of an eye, each of us will stand before the one God who created and redeemed our world. May we be ready when that call comes. Earthly life is short. Pandemics, severe illness, or approaching death have a way of focusing the mind. Whatever God uses to focus our minds, may he enable us to accomplish what he would have us to do during our earthly lives, working while it is day before the night comes when no one can work. And above all, may our gracious God always hold before our eyes what he has done and what he will do when God will wipe away every tear from those eyes and death shall be no more, neither shall there be mourning nor crying nor any pain anymore. Meanwhile, as the hymn puts it, Jesus, lead thou on till our rest is won. Amen. Amen. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus, keeping you in the true faith that leads to never-ending life. Amen. Amen. Confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, 
was, was crucified, crucified and, died and was buried. He, he descended, descended into hell. hell. The third day, day he rose, rose again from, from the dead. dead. He now ascended he into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Lord of the harvest, you sent your word down on earth to give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. You are the living and active among us, calling to repentance and raising to new life. Lead us not into temptation and protect us from the crafts and assaults of the devil, the world and our own flesh, which do not want us to hallow your name, nor let your kingdom come. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord of the harvest, we give you thanks for all your tender mercies. Implant in us your holy word, that in good and honest hearts we may keep him. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord of the harvest, send forth laborers into your harvest, particularly your mission field, that we may be preserved in the pure teaching of your saving word, whereby faith toward you is strengthened, charity increased, and your kingdom extended to all the nations of the world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord of the harvest, grant health and prosperity to all who govern in our various nations in which we serve. Give them wisdom so that they may serve to the maintenance of righteousness, justice, and the punishment of wickedness that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord of the harvest, be with all who are in trouble, want, sickness, anguish of labor, peril of death, or any other adversity, especially those who are suffering from the global pandemic. Comfort, O God, with your Holy Spirit, all who call to you in any time of need, that they may receive and acknowledge their afflictions as the manifestation of your fatherly will. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord of the harvest, preserve us from false and pernicious teachings, from war and bloodshed, from plague and pestilence, from failure of harvest and famine, from anguish of heart and despair of your mercy, and from an evil death. At every time, show yourself to be the very present help in trouble that we need. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you that through your Son, Jesus Christ, you have sown your holy word among us. We pray that you will prepare our hearts by your Holy Spirit, that we may diligently and reverently study your word, keep it in good hearts, and bring forth fruit with patience, and that we may not incline to sin, but subdue it by your power, and in all persecutions, comfort ourselves with your grace and continual help. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Let us now sing that hymn that I referred to earlier. Jesus lead thou on till our rest is one. Number 718 in the Lutheran service book. Number 718.
Jesus, lead thou on till our rest is won. And although the way be cheerless, we will follow calm and fearless, guided by thy hand to our fatherland. If the way be drear, if the foe be near, let not faithless fears o'ertake us, let not faith and hope forsake us. Show through many a woe, to our home we go. When we seek relief from a long felt grief, when temptations come alluring, make us patient and enduring. Show us that bright shore where we weep no more. Jesus, lead thou on till our rest is won. Heavenly lead us, still direct us, still support, console, protect us, till we safely stand in our Fatherland.